Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to share with you my five favorite cold plunge tubs that I've tested over the last couple of years. I've been plunging for a couple of years now and I actually own six cold plunge tubs. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you my top five picks that I think you will like, depending on if you want to have the coldest one or the least expensive one or something in the middle that just looks good in any type of home spa setup. Now, before we get started, I want to share a couple of very important factors with you that you want to consider before making a purchase decision. Those are very important and something you really want to think carefully about before you decide on, you know, which one of those tubs that I'm going to share in this video might be the best for you. And number one, you need to decide, do you want to use a chiller or an ice maker to keep the water cold? The advantage of the chiller obviously is that it can run 24 seven and so your water is always cold and ready to roll whenever you want to take a plunge. With an ice maker, on the other hand, you need to make sure you have a unit that's powerful enough that can produce at least 100 pounds of ice a day and ideally has a big enough container to retain 100 pounds of ice so you can get that out easily and pour it into the water to chill it down fairly quickly. The downside, of course, of a chiller is they're usually fairly expensive, ranging from a couple of hundred dollars to maybe even a thousand or two thousand dollars, depending on how powerful the unit is and whether or not it has filtration capabilities built in. The next one, if you're just using the cold plunge by yourself, it probably doesn't make much of a difference. But if you want to share your cold plunge, if you have it maybe in an environment where multiple people use it back to back, you want to make sure you have a chiller and or an ice maker that's powerful enough. In particular with a chiller or when you, you know, get into the plunge, the body temperature heats up the water by two to three degrees. So if you have three or four people plunging back to back, the last one might actually have significantly warmer water than the first one. So you want to make sure that the chiller is powerful enough and you have enough ice to cool the water down and maybe pour in ice in between plunges to keep the water at the desired temperature. Water filtration is another important aspect, not only from a you know hygienic perspective, but also from a maintenance perspective and how much time you need to invest in maintaining your cold plunge. I prefer a chiller setup with a built-in water filtration system that keeps the water not only sanitary, but also clean for extended period. So you only have to replace the water once every six months or so. Portability is another factor. You know, if uh, I have several large tubs and a couple of portable cold plunge tubs, and there are pros and cons to both. I mean, the the portable ones, you know, obviously you can move around, you can take with you. If you have an RV, if you like camping, you can take the plunge with you, especially if it's inflatable and foldable. Um, you know, you just um, uh, drain the water, remove the air, uh, pack it up and take it with you. With some of the larger tubs, um, you need two people to move them. And, you know, that might be, might or might not be an issue, but something for sure to consider. And now with those factors out of the way, let's talk about my favorite cold plunge overall and that's the Thera Frost by Thera Sage. It's actually a very relatively new addition to our home spa and what I like about the Thera Frost is that it's inflatable, it's portable, it, it actually comes with a, a carrying backpack or carrying bag that you can you know just use to bring it with you if you want to move it but even if you don't want to bring it with you anywhere I've moved the Thera Frost actually a couple of times already because I found it took me a while to found, find the ideal position so I could just drain the water and lift it up with two hands and move it over to the new spot and it was really, really easy and not a big deal at all. Uh, the other thing I really like about the Therafrost is that it cools the water down to 37 degrees Fahrenheit or about 3 degrees Celsius. That's fairly cold and certainly cold enough uh, for most everyone who likes to make cold plunging a regular part of their wellness routine. It also has a very powerful filtration capabilities. It leverages ozone in addition with a sediment filter to keep the water clean and sanitary. So I only have to replace the water every six months or so, and I really like that. The tub itself is also fairly small, but deep. So that means it doesn't require a lot of space, but it, I can submerge my entire body. I'm six foot tall for reference or 182 centimeters, and I can get up until my jawline, which is really important for me because here are you know, nerves running down on the side of, of, of your neck and you want to expose them to cold water because that triggers even more that fight or flight response that I'm trying to control when I get into the cold plunge. The other thing I really like about it, the chiller that it comes with is not only very powerful, it also has wheels to move it around easily, but it also is Wi-Fi enabled. So I can control the chiller remotely and I can set up schedules. So for example, I turn the chiller off automatically based on the schedule at around 7 p.m. or so at a time where I don't cold plunge anymore. 
and turn it back on at six in the morning. So whenever I come down at seven or eight, the plunge is ready, the water is cold and I can jump right in, but it doesn't re you know, use any energy overnight where nobody is plunging and where the likelihood of the water temperature increasing is fairly low. So that's one of my favorite plunges overall from all the ones I've used. Pricing wise, it's just shy of $5,000. So it's not inexpensive, but it's fairly priced based on the features and the capability this has and the fact that I don't have to do a lot to maintain the water quality. You know, I, I fill it up, I test the water every two weeks, I replace the sediment filter maybe once a month, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing else I need to do, and every six months or so, I replace the entire water, which doesn't take very long, and it's easy to drain, easy to refill. I have a discount code down in the description, check it out, that can get you 10% off the purchase price to make it a little bit more palatable. My second choice, and I consider it the best design of any of the cold plunges that I have, is the cold plunge, that's the name of it, by a company called The Plunge or Plunge. And that was actually the first cold plunge that I ever purchased. And it looks like a very high-end acrylic tub. So it's literally a, a bathtub, if you will, that also comes with a very powerful chiller that has the most powerful filtration system of any of the plunges that I've ever tried and owned. So it uses a combination of ozone, of ultraviolet light, as well as a sediment filter to prevent the growth of algae, to keep the water not only aesthetically clean and clear, but also sanitary over long periods. So again, water changes are very infrequent, maybe once or twice a year, and that's pretty much it. The downside of the UV lamp is that you have to replace it approximately every 10,000 hours, which is not a big deal. You know, if you if you run the chiller 24-7, you know, it means every 400 and something days you have to replace the, the bulb. So it's not a, a huge deal, but it's some, just something to keep in mind. From a water temperature perspective, the cold plunge cools the water down to 39 degrees, which is also, that's for about four degrees uh, Celsius. That's also cold enough for everyone. You know, you don't need to go much colder to get all the benefits. The tub looks very slick, very nice. I love it. It looks very great in our backyard. And it's, um, you know, the difference between lying back, just FYI, and maybe being upright in a barrel type of setup is, that I think lying back like in a in a bathtub I think is a little bit more challenging mentally because you almost it feels like you have to surrender more if you're squatting and I'm going to talk about this with some of the other plunges that I have it's a little bit easier to control mentally I think so depending on if you like the challenge or if you don't you know the tub might be a better choice or maybe a barrel option might be a better choice but overall the cold plunge is an excellent plunge uh, high performance, looks like high quality materials, and it also is just shy of $5,000. And I have a discount code that I'm going to link down below that gives you a discount as well, so you can reduce the price there a little bit. One thing that I should point out with the cold plunge is that when you get it delivered, um, mine got delivered with FedEx. It was like a white glove delivery. They put it exactly where I wanted it in our backyard, so they wheeled it all the way down, and they took back all of the trash, all of the packaging materials, which was really convenient because with those big things usually it means I either have to haul off the trash myself somewhere or I have to you know fill up it, it fills up our trash cans immediately and then there is no space for any of our regular household trash so I really like that approach number three the coldest cold plunge I've ever tested and that is the Morosco ice bath by Morosco Forge and I tested that plunge at a biohacking conference a couple of years ago and it chills the water down to 33 degrees so just above the freezing point in fact the bottom of the stainless steel tub had ice build up. So I was sitting literally on a block of ice. The water was incredibly cold. Now, does that make a huge difference from a benefits perspective? You know, 33 versus 37 or 39 degrees? I don't know, but it's definitely uh, the coldest plunge out there. High quality materials. It's 16 gauge stainless steel uh, with cedar framing. And so very, very nice. Looks incredible if you have a you know nice spa setup or even in, in a commercial environment. So it also has a fairly powerful filtration system. It uses ozone as well as a sediment filter. The downside of the Morosco ice bath is that it's fairly expensive. It's handmade here in the US, so that's a pro, but the plunge starts um, just under $13,000. That's a good chunk of money, but in return for that, you get a very high quality type of tub that's, that gets incredibly cold. Uh, incredibly good cooling performance and a five-year warranty but again you know it's 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 a lot of money but if that's what you're out if you want to get the coldest plunge possible that also looks great you know the morosco ice bath is the way to go 
Now on the other side of the spectrum, if you want to look at a more budget-friendly option, there is the Ice Pod Pro by the Pod Company. It's the last ice tub that I that I got that I added to our home spa here, and it's a fairly simple, like you know, plastic kind of enclosure with with a couple of PVC pipes to you know prop it up, and it only costs 150 bucks, so super inexpensive. However, it's also insulated so that doesn't mean it's gonna keep the water cold for days and days but at least it should keep it at a plungeable temperature for a couple of hours if you fill it up with ice and water it holds about 80 gallons or 300 liters of water it doesn't come with a chiller so you need an ice maker or it the thing is it actually has uh, connections for a chiller so if you already have a chiller or if you want to buy it from the same company they, they just started selling them you can buy an optional chiller, which is going to set you back, I don't know, maybe 800 or so bucks. And then you can use that unit with a chiller or you can just use it with an ice maker. If you're on a budget and you want to get the, the least expensive option that's still, you know, decent foldable, you can put it away easily. It, it sets up fairly easily and it holds the water cold for at least a couple of hours, then this is an option. You know, the IcePod Pro is, is, a, is a decent option. Um, you just pair it with an ice maker. Um, if you already have one, even better, you don't need to spend any money on it and you just pour in ice whenever you want to use it. So fairly inexpensive and maybe that one of the cheapest ways to start with cold plunging, you know, besides, you know, taking cold showers. The next one and the last one on the list that I, I have actually two of those is the ice barrel. And the ice barrel, as the name implies, is a barrel. It's a plastic par barrel. It's actually made out of a high quality recycled material called low linear density polyethylene or LLDPE. And so it's fairly sturdy. You, you're you not going to be able to destroy this thing, you know, easily. It exists in two versions, the Ice Barrel 300, which is what I would recommend, and the older Ice Barrel 400. That's actually the one that I have. And the difference is the size. So the Ice Barrel 400 is a regular you know, barrel size, a fairly tall barrel, so you need a step stool to get in and out, ideally. It, it works great, but it doesn't have any connections for chillers, so you have to use an ice maker, and it's not very well insulated. It's insulated to a degree, but not very well. The Ice Barrel 300, which, which is the newer one, is a little bit uh, less tall, but a little bit wider, and it has hookups or connection points for a chiller. Ice Barrel doesn't sell a chiller, doesn't make one, but you can use any third-party chiller pretty much because those connections are all fairly standard and hook it up. Now, the advantage of the smaller one is the Ice Barrel 300. It's much better isolated, uh, sorry, it's much better insulated. So your water stays cold for longer. You can hook up the chiller and it's easier to get in and out. The only downside that I could see with the Ice Barrel 300 is that you are not quite as upright as you could be in the Ice Barrel 400. So as I mentioned initially, I kind of like the idea of being completely upright and just squatting, having their knees bent only slightly, because it puts you very much in control. Even if you have never jumped into ice cold water, you retain the knowledge that you can, all you have to do is if you want to get out, stand up, you know, fairly easy. In a, if you lie back in a bathtub, it's, you know, you need to wiggle yourself out. You know, if you're, you know, freaking out because it's so cold or whatever, it, it might make you feel more vulnerable than just, you know, in a slight squatting position. With the Ice Barrel 300, you have to squat a little bit more so your knees are closer to your chest, which might make it a little bit less comfortable, not not comfortable, but uh, a little bit more intimidating maybe for first time uh, plungers. Um, but on the bright side, it's easier to get in and out. So that's a good thing. So you can just stand up and, you know, take a step out and you're out of the barrel. But pricing wise, they cost pretty much the same. They um, the, those barrels run for about $1,200, which is not exactly inexpensive for, at the end of the day, a plastic barrel. But I think the, with the Ice Barrel 300, there are a lot of arguments for that barrel for spending that money because you get the connections for the chiller, it's well insulated, and it's very sturdy and high quality built so you can't possibly destroy it. So that's why I prefer the Ice Barrel 300 over the 400. I also have an affiliate code that I'm going to link down below, so check it out so you can get a discount. Um, I should also mention that I have a fairly in-depth side-by-side -side comparison of all of those plungers on my blog. So check that out. I'm going to link it down below. And I also mention a couple of additional brands that I have not personally tested yet, but that look pretty good on paper and that I've heard good things about from friends and family that I have them, that own them. 
And so check out my blog post for maybe some other brands that might work for you if the five that I've mentioned in this video don't seem to be working for you. But I think among those five, you'll find one that you like. Either if you want to spend a little bit more money, you get all the convenience and the water filtration and the you know constant cooling, or you can go a little bit on the on the less expensive side and use an ice maker or maybe purchase a separate chiller that you might find maybe even used, you know, uh, from someone. So you get it for a little bit less and um, so you can make ice bathing or cold plunging a regular part of your routine. As far as the benefits are concerned, I've written a, an in-depth review on my blog post and I also have a YouTube video, I think, on the benefits of ice bathing. So I'm going to link all of that down below. Check that out. It's so powerful. It's one of the best things you can do to improve your health and wellness. And I highly recommend making that a regular part of your routine. With that, we're going to wrap it up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, let me know in the comments what I could have done better. Until next time.